One, two, yep. want you know the music was so important it was like 100 percent. it was like we lived it like it's like in my biology to play music or something it just worked the first time i played it and i was like okay there's nothing i can do from now on it, it owns me like or something you know you make people happy you know you get up there and you sing songs and you make people smile and you make them sweat and have fun and just go home with a smile on their face and that's that's an amazing feeling to be able to do that you know there's nothing better than playing to a crowd and seeing them feel it like I mean I, I you know I stand at the back of the stage and I, wa I watch Rex and Jazz out front and Lou as well actually Lou's typically right in front of me but uh, and I, I stand and I watch them play and uh, you know you you can gauge the crowd reaction you know from the, basically how much the guys dance around and how much fun they have and they see us having fun and when they have fun it's fantastic when you're playing around Cork and you're not getting paid you're, you're doing it because you want Everyone here, you know what I mean? You're, you're doing it for the money and the girls and the fame. And of course, sorry, for the music. It's girls. I'm in it for the music. I was thinking one day about what it is, why I play and stuff, and I thought it was, like gigging is unbelievable. Like, the, like just playing them, I found, even at other people's gigs where I'm in, into the band, it's the happiest I can be, I think. And I found that, um, I found recently, I was like, geez, why do I even play the guitar, you know? And I was like, is it to write cool songs to him, you know, that other people would go, well, man, that's cool. And then I just realized it's just when you're playing, you're you're gone, like, you're thoughtless. You're not worrying about anything. You're not, you can't feel hunger. You're not even, you're just away in a riff, like, or a little piece. And it's so nice and it's so, it's just so thoughtless. Like, I think it gives you that. It's the same, any form of art, I think, gives you this. It's like an extension and it's something that you can... You can lose all your shit, all your baggage, to, and you can. Oh, it's just, it's, it's ter It's really, really important. That's why I'd say in five years I'd still be. I couldn't imagine throwing my guitars away or selling them to get, you know, forty-two inch plasma screen or something. You know? <laughs>
play Cork an awful lot and um, we started to pick up gigs around the place so we found actually the less we played here the more people used to come to our gigs or whatever you know because when we were playing here all the time so we just uh, started travelling out uh, as much as we could you know and it's uh, you know I suppose we uh well, I've played loads of disaster gigs like mm. you often get four people yeah. in Ennis or something yeah. Not just mentioning Ennis, but you, know, you could go somewhere and. There was a t- yeah, we played. We played uh, Dundalk, and there was four people there. <laughs> and then we played Ennis, and at one point the club upstairs opened, and we were playing to nobody except the bar staff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, it was amazing. It was. It was brilliant. <laughs> we said we'd never go back there, and we went back there. Yeah, we do as good the second time. We were dancing. Yeah. It's so hit and miss around the country though. You go to Limerick and get a load of people. And then you go back again two months later and there'll be nobody there. Yeah. You, can't really, you can't trust anyone. You, know, you can't be really relying on getting a crowd everywhere. Yeah. You, know, you think you build up a crowd in Limerick or Galway and then you go back and there's, there's hardly nobody there again. Like, so. uh, Kilcool, we played up in Castle Bar before little places that were just people who didn't know what to expect and stuff rather than it being like we're a band and we're coming along and you know everyone is expecting something. Well, we got a gig in Galway and because it's Galway, we're like, oh yeah, sure, fucking second gig, like, anywhere, like, it's brilliant, and Galway's, like, you know, that means we're, we're going to get signed soon, like, <laughs> so we went up to Galway to play the worst venue, yeah, played in Galway, in a way, or the worst gig we ever played in a long time, and um, we got a tenner each for driving <laughs> up, yeah, and our car got clamped, yeah, yeah. our car got clamped, had paid euros for that, we all had to leave for work the next morning and stuff, and we came to a roundabout, driving out of Galway. We were all stopped in traffic and you know, just waiting at the roundabout. Next thing, just got this <laughs> <laughs> into the back of my car, and the two lads had driven into the back of me. And no one was moving, like, we were all just sitting there next to the car, just crushes into mine. Yeah. So, 1500 euros, or yeah, is it 1500 euros worth of damage? Yeah. yeah. And got a tenner each for it. Yeah. You love it! Don't you like it? in Cork. You're never going to make it big in Cork. You have to get out. You know, there's been some fine music recorded in the town. You know, let's just hope it's heard outside of the town. Move to Dublin now. And practice more than we do. Yeah, practice. How do you get to Dublin? <laughs> practice, practice, practice. Band like Fred, who have been like around for maybe eight years or something. They're like a really, really good band. And it, like they went to the States and did some shows kind of off their own back. They're just like, all right, we're off, good luck. And I think they finally realized that, you know, like the ante is upped when you're away from home and you got to go out there. And I think they've come back with an absolutely amazing album. I think, you know, it's kind of unusual a band like maybe eight or nine years into their career to come up with like their best work by far. To target Cork as a Marcus doesn't make sense, you know, because size wise so we're, we're looking at both national and international at this stage and uh, it, you kind of have to in order to continue I think. Like we're I suppose in terms of promotion we find the healthiest response to us and there's various reasons maybe why but mm-hmm. the healthiest response to us is outside of um, like uh, for when we go away to, to, to completely neutral ground like, and you get to kind of your first gig, your first fight at winning over a crowd, we find those situations are brilliant. Like, um, anytime we've to the States in general, be it 30 people at a gig or 35 people at a gig, <laughs> we find 
that um, the reaction is savage. Like, you know, you get mm-hmm. people really spouting rhetoric to you after and getting, well, this and this, and you're going, oh, right, is that what we said? But they're, they're really positive. And it's, it's good to keep challenging yourself that way. So I suppose we've raised our own bar, like, to just, you know, what our own ambitions are. And we've been at it so long, too, that we're kind of going, we kind of have to if we're to survive. Um, so, you know, every we, we say it every album, like there's an awful lot of writing and this this is a real important this is it make or break make or break this is doing we're on to our third make or break I think definitely our second make or break yeah. and we're still you know we're still there and I'm sure a lot of people go how the hell are they still there but we're, we're still there and we're still rocking on it and still getting positive reaction in general as it is, 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 it is the most varied place you, you can go on a night out or whatever. Just <laughs> then you got people like um, Exit Pursuit by a Bear who, who we're very good friends with and you know, they do it so so very well and they put a lot of original elements to it and there's a lot of bands like that in Cork as well who, who've got their own kind of thing you know like in other places in the country it, it can be you, you've got a lot of bands of the same genre and things like that playing around songs. You couldn't say oh we're like this band or we're like that band because the Cork music scene isn't really a scene you know as far as I can say as in it's a scene as in there's a lot of really good bands but there's no one band that set a trend that every other band wanted to copy you know you know, have hung around places like Manchester and Liverpool and Dublin doing albums and, and whatnot to kind of be aware of what's going on there. And these cities will, will throw up like a, a kind of a, like a plethora of bands who will all sound the same. And Cork has never done that, which is which is great. I think, like, you know, you go to see like a four band bill, like, you know, one of your own nights, like whatever, and you're guaranteed, like absolutely guaranteed that no two bands will be alike. And I mean, I think that makes journalists and kind of, you know, radio DJs, that it makes their job like a, a, a little bit tougher in a sense, but uh, you know, it's like music isn't supposed to be easy, you're, you're supposed to be challenged. I find what Cork has going for it is the university is right in the smack in the city, city centre. Now Dublin doesn't really have that, and, and Limerick in particular, the university is miles out. But Cork, the university is right in town, it's smack, you know, smack in the city centre, and it's it's accessible to them, so that that's going to automatically bring up numbers for shows, I think, anyway, as well. There's like a disproportionate amount of really unique, good bands, and like 
ten past seven that really gave us really opened our eyes anyway. Mm -hmm. To Cork is in our what is it called? The city centre is like an island, you know. That's like you know, you could say we're like Cork city centre. Surrounded by suburbs. And they're all suburbs, but we're the main Yeah, we're the, the main, main act like, yeah. London and I see a scene you know where there's haircuts and clothes you know yeah. and, a t and a type of music that everybody's trying to copy or trying to get signed by copying a, a sound you know yeah. it happened in Seattle it happened in London with the punk it happened you know in the 80s with the, you know the new wave lads you know it happens everywhere but Cork doesn't seem to have that like I think it's great to have independent music you know there's like a uh, We've got hardcore bands like Hope Is Noise. Yeah. We've got kind of funky rock like Snowman. And Beverance Tire are just a great music band, you know. There's, uh, Jesus, you've got absolute lunatic bands in, like, uh, uh, what are the lads? Fucking Rulers of the Planet, like, yeah. you know. Right. And, sure, Jesus, what's the lads got a... Uh, Stanley Super 800 got a review this week. And yeah, they're really good job. In Hot Press, it was like 8 out of 10. It was well deserved. You know, it makes commercial sense to try and find the new coal player or whoever, but... You know, that's 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 not why not why I'm I'm in the business. I don't want to find the new Coldplay. play. I mean, if in fact if I found the new new call play, I'd probably you know like murder them or something so that you know they wouldn't scare the musical landscape any more than call play. Had, so. It's just there's a massive scene there. It's just it, most of it gets ignored. It does. Um, well, I know. Would you even call it mainstream in Cork? Is it Cork big enough to have a mainstream? But it does. There has there is a, a kind of. There's a, there's a silent scene. Thankfully, now it's beginning to. People are going to see these, which start out as underground bands, and you know, thankfully they're getting a bit more recognition now. You know. There's only so far you can get in court. Uh, unfortunately, that's the case at the moment. It's like it's a, it's a small town. You have to step outside into the big cities and other countries, into Europe, into the States, before you can really get recognised and make a living from music. You know, you could, in, in the Irish music scene, not just the Cork music scene, you could name nearly every single person. You could name nearly every single person who makes a living, makes a good living from playing their own music. And that gives an indication about how small the scene or about how small the commercial potential really is, you know, a lot of bands, not a lot of money, not a lot of exposure. The hot press tends to, every now and again, yeah. kind of shine the spotlight for five minutes yeah. and it's back again to Dublin, you know. I think here there's more of a sense of individuality from band to band. Um, that's not saying anything against Dublin scene, it still has some great bands, but you have a tendency that if there's one big band, you'll get a, you know, a, about another four or five bands coming out, or more, uh, coming out of that, who would just sound like that band, you know what I mean? So in that way, Cork has not the upper hand, I think. Like you know, I, my job, I guess, is A&R, and you know, when I'm when I'm listening to demos or going to see bands live, I, I want to hear something that's totally unique. I want to hear something that I've never heard before, and I mean that happened with. I mean, they're not a Cork band, but they've been mistaken for a Cork band. But like Fight Like Apes, it's like I heard a rough recording of a gig that they done for yourselves, and it was just just blew me away. I hadn't, I hadn't heard anything like it, and it was like straight away, I just contacted them and said like. Like, can we do a single? Which is, 
you know, they're, they were, we were lucky enough for them to say yes, and you know, it went from there. But that, that's what you live for. That's what you dream about. Really yeah, excited. Yeah. Really it's excited. actually our first time in fact, like, like, playing outside Dublin, so we're hoping to have a good one. Yeah, really, really excited. The venue looks deadly, and it's really good equipment. So it's really excited. So. Played here before. I mean, we know. I mean, we're familiar with Anacrusis um, from CPU Forum in Dublin. Um, Parade. Parade for Humans. Good We've heard a lot about it in the past few weeks and few months, I suppose. Um, and I mean, just from not playing here, we're not familiar with the scene here, but we know a lot of the bands from down here. Tell me why you do it. In general terms, myself and Jamie, like he writes most of the lyrics. Um, a lot of times we write melodies and stuff and come to me with them. And we usually, well, usually in fairness, with, as a band, we just get them together and practice. And from like I write melodies or whatever most of the time, and lyrics it kind of goes different. Just kind of bang it out like every song is different. For a time, we tried to contact them by radio, but no response. Then they attacked the town. Small town, I'll admit, nevertheless a town of people, people who died. It's great seeing bands coming up from, from Galway and Cork as well. I think some might like give them on a kid coming over from mm. Galway and stuff Limerick. and Limerick. Yes. Shit. Give them on a kid from Limerick. Give them a ah that makes perfect sense. Uh, but it's great. It's, I have one of the fa my favourite gigs have been in Dublin have to, over the past while now. Um, have been bands that have come from and that was just the crowd was it was the only usually you get a crowd of kind of listeners they were just all like damn they were just so well, my favourite gig today, today. Like we've been gigging for a few years, and that was my favourite gig today. Today. That's why it's so nice to play in a band, even though like, rather than making your own solo stuff or anything, it's because it, you never know what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And then that way, and the way we don't want, we're not, don't have a sound that we're trying to achieve. It's just like you come down with something and you jam for a while, and that's really fun. And then something comes out of it that that's really good again, or that. It just it's worthwhile. Go out Monday night and see maybe three good gigs around the city. Like go out on a Thursday and there's like ten. Go out on a Saturday and it's the same, you know, so Jam it out! Jam it around. Jam it out. Jam it out! Jam it out! Just jam it around.